Welcome to r slash choosing beggars, where a parent expects a babysitter to pay him $18,000 for the privilege of being a babysitter. On this next post, a choosing beggar made a GoFundMe page because she wanted to buy tickets to take her two-year-old daughter to a Marilyn Manson concert. Then she took to Facebook to complain. Choosing beggar is feeling disgusted. I am so grateful for the cash that we received for Aerie to see Marilyn Manson, but to see that no one has done anything on GoFundMe is just frustrating. Why the eff are you guys so effing selfish? Ariel's photos get likes and people comment on how cute she is. But not one of you has made an effort to make this happen for her. This isn't even for me, really. I've seen him five times in concert. This is for Ariel. Humans, you're all selfish, self-righteous jerk-offs. Yeah, I'm a butthole, but I help people when I can. Y'all are lame. God dang it, you effing people. I'm taking her with or without anyone's help. Lady, if you're taking your daughter with or without anyone's help, then why are you begging for help? Our next Reddit post is from CB Piz. This happened a few years ago, and it still irritates the heck out of me. My child attended a private school about 45 minutes from my town. Since there was no bus or public transportation, the school provided a list of parent names and numbers so people could create their own carpools if they wanted. I worked halfway between my hometown and the school. So, I offered to drive the neighborhood kids to school every morning and pick them up every Friday afternoon, as long as the other three parents in the carpool could divide the four remaining afternoon pickups between them. This worked out great for two years, and I didn't mind doing it five mornings a week, as well as my half day on Friday afternoon, as long as the three other parents managed to get my kid back to our hometown the other four afternoons. Since the three students I was driving graduated the previous year, I made my offer available to incoming freshman parents under the same agreement. Three new families took me up on it. We met at a parking lot in our town each morning at 6.30 a.m. so I could get the kids to school by 7.15 a.m. for a 7.30 a.m. start time. After about two weeks of driving daily, I had the following text conversation in our group chat with the other members of the carpool. Hi, I'm just checking in to see how things are going. So far so good. The reason I'm calling is that my daughter really likes to get to school at least 30 to 45 minutes before start time so she can talk to all of her friends. I spoke to the other parents in the carpool, and we all agreed to start meeting at 6 a.m. so the kids can arrive at school earlier. Sorry, but I'm not going to wake up 45 minutes earlier just so your kid can socialize before school. But the rest of us agreed that we could meet earlier. One of the other parents chimed in. Yeah, we can make that work. Well, that's nice and all, but I'm the one who has to drive every morning. I have to shower and get ready for work before meeting up with you while you guys just drop your kids off in sweats and slippers. I am not willing to change my schedule. That seems very selfish of you. My daughter says she's stressed out each day because she only has 15 minutes to get to homeroom and she never has time to get a coffee or a donut. The other parent agrees with me that earlier is better. I don't know why you're being difficult. Allow me to be clear, this is never going to happen as long as I'm the one driving in the mornings. I don't think you should have complete control over everyone's schedule simply because you're willing to drive every morning. Well, since you all agreed, I suggest you guys figure out a way to get your kids to and from school between you. I'll make arrangements to get my kid home on my own going forward. I never spoke to anyone in the carpool group again, and I've often wondered if the other parents were pissed or embarrassed that the choosing beggar screwed up a good thing for them, or if they all really agreed that I should wake up earlier and thought that I was being selfish for wanting my beauty sleep. On this next post, OP sold something online, and as part of the order she threw in a couple of extra stickers. Hi there, we put extra stickers in every order. They're freebies, so you weren't charged for them. Oh, okay. The thing is, I won't use these stickers. Can I send them back and pick something different? I'm so sorry that you don't like them, but unfortunately it wouldn't be cost effective for you or me to send them back and mail out new ones. Those stickers are just my little way to say thank you for shopping with me. Again, I apologize that you aren't happy with them. So that's a no? That's bad customer service. You should ask customers what stickers they want rather than sending whatever you feel like shaking my head. I'm looking for a free play place for my kids. I refuse to shell out 500 bucks at Home Depot for one. It must have A, a slide, B, attached swings, C, a higher and lower platform, D, ropes to swing from. Delivery only, please. This Saturday would be the best day to come to my house, and if you could install it too, I'd treat you to some lemonade. 
Also, make sure there are no nails or sharp objects that could hurt my boys. Thanks in advance. I have one for you. Call me on my cell so we can arrange delivery. Here's my phone number. Hey, you gave me the wrong number. That's Lowe's. That's a hint, honey. They'll help you with what you need just fine. I'm reporting you, grunt. So, you've got to give up a $500 play set, disassemble it, load it into your truck, drive it to her house, unload it, install it, but don't worry, you get some sweet citrus water. Actually, down in the comments, people were saying that 500 bucks is really low, so I looked it up, and yeah. These things can go anywhere from $1,000 to $15,000. This next post originally comes from r slash am I the butthole, but it really fits in r slash choosing beggars. Am I the butthole for refusing to be my friend's baby's godfather after I was given a legally binding contract to sign with requirements attached? So my wife is from another country, and we met a couple where the husband is from the same country as my wife. We've all been great friends for almost nine years now. We've done a lot together, and they're our best friends hands down. The husband has no living family members. Well, the wife is pregnant with a baby girl. For the sake of this story, we'll call the child Jane. The husband asked me if I could be Jane's godfather. I should note that they're Catholic. I was honored. My friend was thrilled, and the next day he dropped off an envelope with some papers in it. After he left, I looked at the document, and it was a legal contract that I would have to sign in order to be Jane's godfather. Obviously, I thought that this was a bit overboard, but I gave it a read anyways. It had a list of things that I must do as a godfather. For example, I have to attend every Catholic event that Jane attends, such as christening, confession, confirmation, etc. And I know that these are normal events for a Catholic kid's life. It's not a big deal. But then we got to the ridiculous things. I have to convert to Catholicism, and I have to give a gift of at least $500 to Jane during each of these events. On each one of Jane's birthdays and on each Christmas, I have to give Jane over $250. Oh no, it gets worse. I am expected to save at least $25,000 and set it aside for Jane's future college tuition. Jane's parents will provide the rest. Seriously? The list goes on to include various other things, like I have to be willing to cancel my plans if they need me to watch Jane or if they want to go on vacation. There were also a bunch of other things on the list that were silly or not a big deal, like spending time with Jane at least once a week. I called my friend and said it was nothing personal, but there was no way that I was going to sign this. He got mad at me and said that I'm the only family they have and that I should be thankful and honored to be asked this. I told him that I was honored, but that this contract was extreme and ridiculous, especially when it came to the money involved. He brought up that he knows that I'm my niece's godfather and that I send her money, and he's right about that, I do. I send my niece about a hundred bucks a year. I told my friend that there's a big difference between a hundred bucks and tens of thousands of dollars over 18 years. He essentially told me that he thought that I was a good guy, but it was apparent that I was selfish. He has since blocked my number and my email. His wife has too. Mind you, his wife and my wife talk almost every day. I shredded the papers he gave me, put the pieces in a bag, and then put the bag in his mailbox. I wrote a note saying that it was a shame that he ruined a friendship over ridiculous demands. I told him I forgive him regardless. Lastly, I should point out that together, this couple makes almost $200,000 a year. My wife and I make not even $35,000 a year. So am I the butthole for refusing to be Jane's godfather? OP, this guy basically expects you to pay him to be a free babysitter. For life. For like all 18 years. This is quite possibly the worst deals in the history of deals. Your friend is a major entitled choosing beggar. I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes. I'm giving your friend 4 out of 5 buttholes. Good morning. My friend mentioned that you have an opening for babysitting weekend nights. Hey, I do have openings now. My name is Blank, by the way. I'm actually open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Send me some details and we can do a demo if you want. Yes, perfect. I'm Karen. We'd be interested in all those days from about 6 p.m. to midnight. We have four girls all under five years old. While it's a lot, I promise that they're angels. Huh, I'm sure they are, and I can't wait to meet them. I can probably do two of those nights. I don't want to give up every weekend night, if you understand. 
We would really need you for all three nights. Pretty please? Okay, no promises on all three nights, but I did say that I would try. As for the price, for four kids, I'd say that would be about 30 bucks an hour. We were told that you're expensive. My hubby and I decided on 15 bucks an hour with a possible bonus. So, about the babies, we'd expect you to have them bathed, diapered, and asleep by 8 p.m. They are angels, so it should be easy. They need to be put in nighttime diapers, not the day ones, or you'll get lots of leaks, lol. You should probably wait as long as you can before bath time, because my oldest likes to poop right before bedtime, lol. Whoa, hold on a second. I'm not doing 15 bucks an hour for four kids. I can negotiate a little, but that's just too low. Also, are none of them potty trained, or is it just nighttime diapers? Hmm, let me talk to my hubby. 30 is way too high, lol. That's ridiculous. Our oldest is in pull-up, so she's almost there. But she still poops in them? How old are the other kids? Also, 30 bucks is my raid. It's pretty competitive in my area. My husband says 25 for the first two hours and 10 for the rest of the night since they'll be sleeping. I have twin two-year-olds, a three-year-old, and a four-year-old. I swear that you'll love them. That is still 90 bucks a night, LMAO. It's the same thing as 15 bucks an hour. Also, because babies are known for sleeping through the night, I'm willing to go to 25 bucks an hour, but that's really it. But the bonus! Do a good job and you can get more. Tomorrow would be perfect for a demo. Hubby and I will both be home. Come over around 11. With that time, it'll be perfect. You can do most of the diaper changes, cover nap time, bathe them, and put them to bed. That's an absurd demo time. I normally do demos for like an hour or two. I doubt that we'll come to an agreement on this. Thanks, but no thanks. But we want you! My friend said that you were amazing. What can we do to get you? Pay me, lol? We want someone who loves our kids and isn't in it just for the money. Pretty please. I don't want to tell my friend about how bad you are to us, but I will. 100% no. Good luck getting someone to babysit four kids in diapers for that cheap. Please do tell your friend about this because I'm going to send her screenshots of this myself. <laughs> when this lady said, we want someone who loves our kids and isn't in it for the money. Lady, that person is you and your husband. Do you really expect some complete stranger, probably a teenage girl, to just randomly love your kids when they've never even met them? Why would anyone want to be elbow deep in baby poo for free? Our next Reddit post is from Warlazy. Short backstory, we used to live in a different country, but we moved to Europe. And since then, we've gotten too many freeloaders from our old life coming here for free accommodation. We currently live in a large five-bedroom house on a farm in the mountains. It's a small town in the middle of Europe, so it's super peaceful, but we're still close enough to the capital city and other hubs. We used to live in a big city in another country, and we still have a lot of family and friends there. We've lived here for close to 20 years now, and during those first few years, we'd get a steady stream of people coming to stay with us on the pretext, It's so good to see you again. Between June and August, we'd have one group leave and another arrive. Hospitality being what it is, we never asked these people to pay for their stay, and they never offered. The first year was bearable, but after three or four years of this, we're over it. These freeloading leeches had other family and friends within a few hours of us. And we heard from some of those people that these freeloaders planned their entire travel itinerary according to where they could stay and eat for free, consistently abusing our culture of hospitality. After three or four years of being a free bed and breakfast, news got back to us about how cheap we are. We're a family of five, so when you get a second entire family that comes in, that's a whole lot of mouths to feed. We'd often cook up a large pot of meat and vegetable stew with homemade bread or a large roast. We'd also try to take our guests to a local attraction. So imagine when news got back to us that apparently we crammed their whole family into one room, gave them gross food, and took them to boring places. Some of these freeloaders even complained that they left our house hungry. One family even lost a valuable piece of digital equipment, and they accused my kids of stealing it. They later found the item in the car of another friend, but they didn't bother apologizing for their accusations. Not all of our out-of-town guests were bad, though. There have been a few that we actually invited to come back. The others have never been invited back, and if they call, we ask them if we can make a reservation for them at a local hotel. 
I am so sick of kicking one or more of my kids out of their rooms to accommodate choosing beggars and then have their junk all over my house. They take all of your hospitality and expect more, then have the nerve to complain that you don't offer enough food, that we don't have the right drinks or snacks, and that it's boring here. Needless to say, ever since we're no longer available as a free destination, we're the ones being called cheapskates by choosing beggars who come to Europe and not pay a single night's accommodation in a hotel because they look for suckers to take them in for free. We don't care, as long as they don't come here. OP, that sounds super frustrating. And actually, me and my wife are planning to go to Europe later this month. How about we stop by for a couple of nights rent-free and you can complain all you want to about these rude choosing beggars. Hello, can I post your artwork? I always ask artists to pay $7 for a publication. Is that possible for you? Can I do a payment in DN? What is DN? These nuts? That was r slash choosing beggars, and if you like this content, check out my Patreon where I publish extra episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.